Tonight on Animal House, the SPCA battles to get a severely abused puppy back on its feet. The bone's been so badly damaged it's not salvageable. A mysterious virus threatens to wipe out a flock of pet sheep. Hey, sweetie. The sheep's still alive. And the arrival of a rowdy rooster ruffles everyone's feathers. Could someone please shut that rooster up as quickly as possible, thank you. The SPCA is travelling north of Auckland to talk to a couple who witnessed a horrific case of animal abuse. The story so far that we know is that a dog has been found in a garage of an empty um, house that isn't occupied, um, basically bound up by its, both of its legs, uh, front leg and back legs with masking tape. The couple discovered the dog after hearing its cries of pain. I looked through the window, I had a torch and I saw it, it was strung up. It had got itself, because it was bound, yeah. it had also got itself caught in its lead. The, the lead that it was tied. And he was hanging. I've never seen anything in such a state. He was so petrified. Mm. But it was time. deliberate. It wasn't, it, it, the dog hadn't it caught itself. itself up or anything <laughs> like that, no. no. Todd is on his way to pick up the dog, which is being cared for at a nearby vet clinic. Why anyone would want to be doing this, I don't know, but um, we're heading to see how bad the dog is. Just come to have a look at this pup. Apparently it's All quite right. important to you guys. Yeah, she's very sore. Oh, cool. And so... um, looks like she's been through a lot. She's so cute. Oh. Look at her face. Oh, uh, sweetie. She, you can just see that she's just in a lot of pain. The people that brought her in, um, they've given us all the masking tape and everything that she was tied up with. So that was around her back legs and her tail was clamped down as well with all of that wrapped around it. I can't understand why anyone would need to hold so tie a dog up. She was so twisted up that she was finding it hard to breathe. And that's why she would have been crying, crying out and, yeah. and, and also in a lot of pain. Good deal. It's all right, sweetie. Here we go. The traumatised puppy is only about six months old and it's unclear how severe its internal injuries may be. Well, this is a pretty distressing case. It just seems to get worse every time I hear more about it. Um, the, the dog's obviously been found in a terrible state. Um, I'm really keen to try and find out who has done this. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't any witnesses. It's going to be a real tough one to actually get anyone to actually own up to doing it, I imagine. Um, and and the dog being the only witness we've got, um, unfortunately she's not going to be telling us much. In central Auckland there has been a complaint about a bird in a bind. I'm from the SPCA, my name's Sue. Yeah. Um, we had a call about a rooster on the property. It's not for me, for my sister-in-law. OK, can I go and have a look? Yeah. Where is he? Oh, mate. <laughs> so did you tie him up? Yeah. To stop him running away. Yeah. How long has he been like this for? She bring on Saturday night. Oh, OK. The rooster seems to be in reasonable health, but it's illegal to tether birds as it can cause leg injuries. Why has she got the rooster in the first place? I don't know. You don't know? Mm. OK. Yeah. Well, I can help you. I can take the rooster. We can find a home for the rooster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I can't, it, you can't tie a rooster up. Okay. Yeah. It's not yeah. really appropriate. If, you yeah. look, if you're going to keep a rooster, they need to forage around. Sue will try to contact the owner to suggest the bird be surrendered to the SBCA. It's all right. Oh, she's on my rope. There you go, mate. I know. You've been waking people up in the early hours of the morning, huh? I just put a towel over him because with birds, um, it settles them down. It's a lot nicer for them travelling. They can't see what's going on. In South Auckland, Sue joins Inspector Sasha Kalti to investigate a complaint about a collapsed sheep. Hello. Hi. I'm Sasha and this is Sue. We're from the Auckland SPCA. We're just here. We've had a call from someone about a sheep yes. being uh, down. I, uh, I, uh, my neighbour called me this morning. Yeah. Uh, saying it's sheep is dead. Oh, it's yeah. that it's dead? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Can Do we come and have a look at it? Look? Sure. 
Okay. Thank you. The owner admits he's a novice when it comes to caring for sheep. I've been living here for seven years, and the sheep came along with the house, and the sheep is here to graze, basically. I do care about the sheep. Um, I wish I can do more, but unfortunately, our knowledge about my knowledge about animals is quite limited. Hi, hey, sweetie. And today, Ken has misread the signs of an animal in severe distress. The sheep's still alive. Did you come and look at it, or just the neighbour told you that it was dead? The neighbour told me, and I had a look at it, it wasn't moving, it wasn't moving at all. OK. It was big. Prior to 8 o'clock this morning, I saw it on the ground, and I rang the neighbour, and he didn't hasn't appeared to have done anything from there to then. So, midday, I thought I should ring the SPCA. Rambo! After living in suburbia for six years, Rambo and his paddock mates have become pretty tame, and neighbour Graham has formed quite a bond. Well, they're all very friendly sheep. I think that's a, a fairly new one to the paddock, but I don't know where it came from. Those five was mine. Yeah. But this one, sort of running around on the paddock one day, yeah. I, I cornered him in and looked after him ever since. He really should have come out and um, had a look at the sheep to make sure it, it was not still alive. My feeling is that um, she's very, very old and um, there's possibly not too much hope, but hey, we'll just wait and see what the vet has to say. The inspectors are taking the sheep back to the SPCA hospital for a second opinion. But after loading the sickly ewe, they discover they have a bigger problem on their hands. See the, um, the discharge too, out of this one? Mm. See how it's bubbling out of its nose? Is it quite green as well? Yeah, which mm. could indicate a respiratory problem. We're just having a look at one of your other sheep. Huh? Um, it's actually got quite a lot of discharge from its nose. We probably want you to get a vet, vet out, have a look over look, all the sheep, give them a basic health check anyway, and right. then we'll come back and see how they're doing perhaps next week. OK. Thanks, Cam. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. OK. It's been 24 hours since the abused puppy was discovered. Painkillers are making her comfortable, so now her injuries can be assessed. She was limping apparently on the left hind, so we'll just... Yeah, there's, there's some crepitus in its hip and it's not quite symmetrical. So the, the most likely thing is she's got a fracture through her femoral neck, so the ball at the top of the femur may have separated from the femur itself. She will probably need surgery if it is fractured. So it's basically as we suspected that it's actually fractured its femoral neck. The top of it, so that piece there, is broken off. These are correctable. Normally we do, what you do is what they call an excision arthroplasty and they just remove this fractured off fragment and the rest of the femoral neck. Um, so what we'll do is we'll keep it on pain relief for the time that it's here. We certainly won't be leaping in and doing this surgery before the end of its tray time. Things don't look good for this girl. She needs costly hip surgery and it's unlikely an owner will turn up and take responsibility for her. After 10 days with a broken hip joint, the pup, who's been named Polly, has made great progress, even without surgery. Unfortunately, the SPCA has been unable to find the person responsible for causing her injuries. The Sunday Star Times have approached us um, about um, Polly here, um, wanting to, to sort of um, help us with a, an appeal and also to just sort of get her story out there. Donations are helping fund Polly's treatment. And thanks to the $5,000 raised, today Polly is undergoing surgery to remove her hip joint, which can't be repaired. It's unfortunate that we're unlikely to be able to make her an absolutely perfect dog later on, but she'll still be a very, very functional pet. I'm confident of that. I'm going to remove what remains of this neck part of the, of the bone, and then I'm also going to take out the ball part. So what we're trying to do is give Polly a pain-free false hip, if that makes sense. It's not really a hip replacement because we're removing the broken bone, but the bone's been so badly damaged it's not salvageable. Polly will always have a weak hip, but if surgery goes well, she should be able to lead a normal life. The SPCA has grave concerns about the collapsed sheep. As far as we know, she's been down since approximately 8 o'clock this morning, but of course it could have been overnight. She's very thin, um, feel her spine, and she's got no teeth. She's also very anemic. Anemic, yeah. What's wrong with the sheep is a mystery, which doesn't bode well for her paddock mates. 
I don't think there's I much really, hope for her, is there? I really don't think so, Sue. No. I think we should do the kindest thing. Yeah. Set her free. It's always sad to put any animal to sleep, but, you know, it, it's also a real blessing that we can do that, because this, this poor girl was clearly um, suffering. She's gone, Sue. Hmm? She's gone. OK. Well, be in touch with um, the owner of the rest of the stock in the next few days and make sure he's organised for a vet to come out and um, find out what's going on. After 30 minutes in surgery, x-rays will reveal whether Polly's operation was a success. You can see the line of the nice sharp cut that's been made across here, taking away the pieces of bone that were causing the problems, I guess. So, And uh, that's exactly what I wanted to see on this x-ray. I couldn't be happier with it. She's got some recovery to do. Her muscles are uh, wasted on that side and, and she's going to need to have some physiotherapy done. Polly will return to the animal village, where she will continue her long journey to recovery. The owner of the tethered rooster has called and surrendered the bird to the SPCA. It's really hard to find homes for roosters um, and that's why so many roosters get dumped because people get them and they just have no idea how noisy they are. I mean, some roosters can start crowing at 3, 4 in the morning and it's just non-stop. But um, this one's quite a little character, so um, we'll see how we go with him. Um, we're going to call him Rock, Rock the Stud, the Stud Rooster. Hey, Rock, what do you think? Hi, Fiona. Hello. <laughs> um, I have another rooster for you. Thank you. Uh, that's my collection. Yes. Hi. Shall we take it down? Yeah. I think this is a sign of things to come. Hey, Rock. Hey? Rock will stay at the animal village till a new owner can be found. That's if anyone will have him. I think everybody's going to hate me in a day or so. But too bad. It's three and a half weeks since Polly's hip surgery, and she is walking again. Canine attendant Barbara Shakeshaft is fostering her while she continues her rehabilitation. Um, today she's going um, to the specialist about her leg um, and they're just going to see how she's getting on. Yes, he's coming, he's coming. Good morning. Hey Richard, Good how are you? Hi. Hey Paul, how are you doing? She certainly remembers you as soon as she saw you, she yeah. started talking. Richard assesses how Polly is walking without a hip joint. Oh, I think she's doing great. That's exactly what I want to see her. In fact, she's probably even doing better than I thought. Um, I don't expect her at this stage to be walking normally. In fact, that's going to take several months. It's quite clear that she's got a personality that's kind of special. You know, she's into life and people, and uh, I don't think she's got a mean bone in her body, which is, um, makes will make her a great pet for someone, and uh, hopefully we've done something to help. The SPCA's fears have been realised. The tame flock of sheep have all been infected by the respiratory virus. So what's the story with these sheep? The owner of them had a sheep that was down and we actually brought it in here and it had to be put to sleep. Oh, okay. um, since then he's had another one die and he's just decided that he, he just isn't capable of looking after them, so he's asked that we that he surrender them to the SPCA. No, no this one here, you can see that this one here is... It's just the whole nose is just full. What we could do is we could get them all shorn, we could drench them and put them on some antibiotics if you want to run with them. What about the other animals that are here? Well, I can't, you know, I can't guarantee that it's not, not contagious, but I think in the short term we can confine them here. They're eating and drinking okay, um, and we could at least get them started and then just see how they progress from there. Does that sound fair? Rambo and his friends will undergo an intense course of antibiotics in the hope they can shake the infection. You know, the, the point is is that when they get rehomed, effectively they're glorified lawnmowers, so we have to make sure that they're actually going to live a happy, healthy life. After surviving being beaten and hogtied, then gruelling hip surgery, Polly has had a terrible setback. Hi. Hi. How's she getting on? Oh, her skin's still really itchy. That's been going on for a couple of weeks now, hasn't it? Yep. Oh, she's scared. It's quite scared to be under there, isn't it? Mm. Polly has developed a mysterious skin condition which could jeopardise her future. We've already given her a couple of treatments for, for parasites, for mange, in case it was. 
Um, I think what we'll do is we'll send her to a skin specialist because if, it's, if, it, if it can't be controlled and if she can't live a normal, happy life, then we've got, you know, we're going to have to make it some decisions about her future. Rock the Rooster has been at the Animal Village for three weeks. And he is ruffling everyone's feathers. OK, matey, we really need to find you a new home very soon, don't we? Hey, making a lot of noise. Most roosters are noisy, but rock crows 24-7. The rooster's still going. God, crows all hours of the day and just makes heaps of noise and drives everybody bonkers. Well, it's coming up about three weeks now and uh, we haven't had any nibbles on homes for him, which is a little bit sad, because he is a very good looking bird. Just needs to cut down his noise a little bit. He's driving everybody up the wall here a wee bit. Paging all staff, could someone please shut that rooster up as quickly as possible, thank you. I haven't heard the rooster. <laughs> After just two days of treatment at the shelter, Another sheep has fallen victim to the mystery illness. So as you can see, we're missing the brown one yeah. because it didn't respond to treatment. Mm. So unfortunately, we put that one down on humane grounds, but these three are doing quite well. Rambo and two ewes are now the only survivors from the flock of six. The SPCA has called in a specialist vet to check their course of treatment. So what we've done is we've treated them with a few doses of long-acting antibiotic and yeah. these three seem to have responded quite well. Yeah. So we'd yeah. just like you to have a quick check and see if that's a reasonable thing to do for them, that's all. Up you go. We know they're at least eight years of age. Right. So that was the other concern, but you know, yeah. sheep don't often live, get to live this long. Absolutely, yeah. Well, as far as I can tell, there's, there's no sounds down in their lungs, yeah. which means that it's not a lower risk. Yeah, problem, which is what we... Um, which is what we thought. thought yeah, um, that's good. So it's probably just limited to the to the nasal cavity and, and, and around the nose yeah. and the mouth. It's just nice to know that we're on, you know, yeah, I think you're on the right path. No, I think you're on the right track. OK, excellent. Right. At this stage, I think with the treatment that Peter's put in place, Rambo and his girlfriends are, are going to be fine. I'm really nervous. Really nervous. All right, Pauls, come on. It's D-Day for Polly. Her future now hinges on the results of an assessment by a skin specialist. All right, you ready? Ready? We noticed when she first came in, she was um, a bit itchy, but we put that down to because she was um, hog-tied with masking tape. So we thought it was just like a contact type sort of um, reaction from the tape, but then it sort of progressed. I'll uh, perhaps uh, get a few samples from interesting areas and we'll have a look at those uh, under, under the microscope. If Polly's skin condition is untreatable, she cannot be rehomed. It's an anxious wait for Todd and Barbara. Well, Todd, I think the news is good. Excellent. Yes. Uh, we found no mites at, uh, no mites at all yep. and we saw no bacteria or or yeasts even. Oh, that's brilliant. So I think Dr McQueen has done exactly the right thing and Polly might benefit uh, from repeating that uh, treatment. So the, the sort of scanning of the skin and the dandruff, you think that's just going to sort of wear off eventually? That's right. Gradually the skin and those uh, calluses will, will return to normal. I'm really relieved, really relieved. I've got a little bit attached. Um, although you try not to, you, you can't help it. Hopefully this has been the last of Polly's hurdles and she can now be put up for adoption. Rock has been at the SPCA now for more than a month, but today there is some welcome news. OK, well, finally we have a home for Rock. Um, it's, been, it's been taken a while. He's kind of been driving us all a little bit mad for a little while. Um, he's quite a crower. He's not just your early morning crower. He's uh, all kind of well, times during... of day and yeah. night kind of crower. We've got double glazing all around the house, so it's not us who's going to have a what problem. What about your neighbours? <laughs> the neighbours are a reasonable distance away from, from where, uh, where the house is. But we've got uh, 18 hens, and we're selling uh, free-range eggs. Oh. Um, so we'd like to actually start a little bit of a Have breeding programme. Have some babies. Yeah, oh my so he's God. So well, he's going to be a stud master, isn't he? He's going to be the stud. He's going to have 18 hens. What a lucky man. Oh my God. See what I mean? It's real friendly. Finally, this noisy rooster really has something to crow about. <laughs> Barbara has some news about Polly. 
and I've had her for about two and a half months now, so I've formed quite an attachment to her. And I'm really happy she's going home today. It's, it's still quite hard. Polly is about to be adopted by a woman who came forward after reading about her terrible abuse. I heard about Polly on the SPCA website. I heard about her story and uh, it really struck me as to how tragic it was. And the fact that she had survived that ordeal was quite remarkable. She's a very special dog. I think Polly's, Polly's had a very tragic start to her life and I feel that I can offer her an opportunity for a lifestyle that is filled with fun and routine. Just, just a good life that she hasn't already experienced. Hey. It's been super, extremely frustrating not being able to hold anyone accountable for what happened to her. Um, if we had been able to prove anything, you know, the people would have been looking at uh, possibly a jail sentence, a uh, minimum of a, of a large fine, um, obviously forfeiture of Polly, but I mean, we've, we've, we've got that. Um, she's going to a great new home. As I said, that, that's the second best outcome that I could have hoped for. Okay. Oh, best. Thank you. Almost two months after being uplifted from a suburban paddock, the remaining sheep have moved to greener pastures. Despite treatment, the respiratory disease claimed a fourth sheep's life, and only two have made it to their new home. Uh, sadly for Rambo the sheep, um, we, he had the respiratory infection that they all did. Um, we put them on antibiotics, um, but Rambo didn't respond, so we felt that it was kindest for him to have him put to sleep. Um, being an older sheep as well, you know, to try and keep him on and on and on with more antibiotics, it wouldn't have done him any favours, so he's gone to sheep heaven. It's a sad outcome for Rambo, but new owner Trish Dahl is determined to give his two widows a happy retirement. We are hoping to give them just a peaceful, stress-free life. Um, we've adopted them to be able to help us kick the paddock down. Dad, the sheep, the sheep. We've decided to call them Thalma and Louise. I think they'll be very happy here. Hopefully they have a good long life. <laughs>